In this video, I'm going to show you how to do focus stacking with the Camera Ranger 2. I'm using a Canon camera, but the Camera Ranger 2 also works with Sony, Fujifilm, and Nikon. And we have separate videos showing focus stacking on each of those cameras. Focus stacking is the process of combining multiple images for enhanced depth of field. Particularly in macro photography, the depth of field of a single capture is typically very shallow. However, you can take a process of multiple captures, adjusting the focus slightly between each shot. You can then combine or stack all of these captures together to create one image with a much larger depth of field. It's often used in macro photography, such as for insects to get the entire thing in focus, or product photography of small objects like rings or other jewelry. Now, as you can imagine, the process of taking multiple images and slightly adjusting the focus each time can be difficult and tedious. So the Camera Ranger 2 makes it easy to automate this process, and it's pretty simple to set up and use. Let's go into the app and see how that works. Okay, here we are within the Camera Ranger 2 app. We are connected to a EOS R with a 100mm lens. First thing we want to do is turn on Live View by pressing the Eyeball button. And you can see now we have a feed of what the camera is seeing, in this case a ruler. We next want to press the magnifying glass to open up the Focus Stacking tab. You can see at the top we have a series of large, medium, and small arrows. Those are Focus Adjustment. Up moves the focus further away and down moves the focus closer in to the camera. In the focus stacking section you'll see a take configuration shot button. We'll go ahead and push that and that just takes a sample shot so that the Cam Ranger can know the focal length of the lens which is part of the calculation for focus stacking. Now this one and two represents two different focus positions. One is the nearest, and two is the farthest. So the nearest being the nearest distance we want in focus, and the furthest being the furthest away we want in focus. Now before we set the first point, we can adjust the focus however we want. We can manually rotate the camera lens, we can use the incremental focus buttons, or for example, we can just do a touch focus tell to get focus there on the ruler and then press set to set our near point. Now the first time you do that it'll come up with some instructions. The most important part is it's telling you that you can only use the incremental focus buttons after you set a focus point. Because we are actually tracking the focus changes, if you do a touch focus the Cam Ranger can no longer keep track of what's going on, and so it clears the points. So you can only make incremental focus changes so the Cam Ranger can ch track those changes that are being made. So, as stated, we'll make incremental changes, move farther away, and set the far focus point. You'll now see one and two are buttons, so we can actually push those and move the focus to the near or the far point. You'll also notice this 0 over 600. What that's doing is telling you the number of step increments internal to the camera that are there. So this is purely informational, isn't really necessary, and there's no real-world equivalent between internal camera steps and some measurement of distance but it can be potentially useful. So for example, like if we press um, to go to the far point, you'll see it changes from 0 over 600 to 600 over 600. Or if we press one large increment in, we're now at 400 out of 600. So again, not important to track, but there are times when it can be useful to see where you are within the stack. I'll press the plus button to look at some of the more advanced options. See, we have our focal length there, which, as I said, is a 100 millimeter lens. And the Cam Ranger 2 has calculated the number of shots to be 13. So the Cam Ranger 2 actually calculates for you based on the 
nearest and farthest focus point, the camera's focal length, as well as the f-stop, how many shots should be taken. So it tells you 13 shots because it calculated a step size of 50. And again, these are just internal to the camera steps. If we want to adjust that, we can do so by changing the adjustment factor. It's set to the default of one, but for example, we can set it to two, and you can see it's now doubled the step size, resulting in a halving of the number of shots. The camera Ranger 2 usually does a pretty good job of calculating how many shots to take with a reasonable amount of overlap in the focus. Um, so this two is probably too much, um, resulting in not enough shots and sections out of focus between our shots. So I'll go ahead and set that back to one. As I said, the f-stop can make a difference because obviously that is a factor in depth of field. So for example, right now it's f11. If we change it to f2.8, not only does it get very overexposed, you can see the step size goes way down and the number of shots goes way up. I'll set it back to f11, which is a good um, f-stop for our stack. Okay, everything's all set here. I'll go ahead and press start and it'll start through the process of taking a picture, adjusting the focus, taking a picture, adjusting the focus. Now, it's important to remember to turn off the camera's image playback time. If you don't, the focus actually won't change. So this is a camera setting in the camera's menu, the image playback time, and that needs to be turned off. That's a common problem, and you end up with, in this case, 13 images all the same and no change in focus. So you want to make sure image playback is turned off. Okay, so it's finished our stack, and we can view the images and you can see the focus changing slightly as you have each subsequent image. It's more obvious if you jump right to the end, back to the beginning, you can see the difference. Now the Cam Ranger 2 doesn't actually do any of the post-processing to combine the image. You need to use some third-party software and there's a lot of different options. Personally, I like Zerine Stacker but there are others such as Photoshop or Helic in Focus. Those can also do a good job. Now, specifically with Canon, there are a number of advanced settings related to focus stacking, and let's take a look at these. So we'll go into the settings, and then controls and workflows. Uh, one actually here is the HDR slash focus stack delay. This will add an additional delay to the stack in between each shot. Most commonly you'd want to do this if, for example, you needed to recharge a flash between each shot. You can enter in in seconds an additional delay. This focus change increment is important to understand as well. When we adjust the focus incrementally on Canon, it's actually a series of smaller incremental steps. So let's say when I press the large incremental step change button, it actually moves it, say, 25 steps. This focus change increment is how large each of those 25 steps is. And you can see the options are small, medium, and large. In general, medium is a good place to set it. You may want to do large, for example, if you're taking a picture of just like a regular scene that isn't macro. It'll be much faster and more efficient if each of those incremental steps is larger. Conversely, if you're doing a really close-in macro and want really fine control, you may want small. Each of those incremental steps will be smaller, so things will take longer, but you'll have more fine control. When in doubt, just stick with medium. This focus stack reset field is useful if you're doing a repeating a large number of sequences. Because we're just 
sending a large number of focus changes to the camera back and forth each time we adjust the focus, over time it can slightly get out of whack. So basically, let's say you have a set po a start point and an end point, and you go from start point to end points to start point to end point to start point to end point. As you do that a number of times, you can get slightly off. Your start point and end point can shift very slightly. Typically, it's not a problem, but if you're doing, for example, we had a customer doing you know a hundred of these stacks and wanted the same exact thing. What this focus stack reset does is it brings the focus to the nearest possible focus point in the lens's range before each stack. So it essentially resets itself so you get better repeatability. So that's a very advanced setting that for the most part isn't necessary to touch. And lastly, you'll notice classic focus stacking. For those who may be familiar with the original Cam Ranger, this is the focus stacking method that the original Cam Ranger uses. And I'll show you what that looks like. So it doesn't do any calculation for you of how many shots to take or what your step size should be. Instead, it just gives you an option to enter in the number of shots, enter in the step size as small, medium, or large, and then when you press start, it starts the stack from where you are currently, taking the number of shots specified with the step size that you entered. So hopefully that provides a little bit more information and some clarification on how focus stacking works with Canon. It is different for different cameras, so this is Canon specific, and some of those advanced options can be a little tricky for the most part. You don't need to worry about them, and if you're having any issues or problems, definitely do email us at support at camranger.com. So I hope the video was helpful, and thanks for watching. Bye.